Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Easy CS for you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like and share. In this video, we are going to learn about the basic concepts of OOPS which comes in second PUC syllabus. The weightage of this chapter is 6 marks, 1 mark, 1 question and 5 mark, 1 question. So let's get into this chapter. In 1980, C++ is developed by John S. Tostrup in AT&T Bell Labs. In C, plus is an increment operator. The increment to C is OOPS. So we can say that C plus OOPS is, is equal to C++. Originally, C++ was a pre-compiler just like a C preprocessor which converts source code to plain C code which is then compiled by a normal C compiler. The file extension are .c++ or .cc. Programming paradigms. What are programming paradigms? Programming paradigms are a way to classify programming languages based on their features. In programming paradigms, there are of two types. The first one is procedure-oriented programming called as POP and second one is object-oriented programming called as OOPS. When come to procedure-oriented programming, in this, the programs are written with one or more procedures and each procedure performs a specific task. Data is openly passed from one procedure to another procedure. Thus, it employs a top-down designing approach. It mainly concentrates on procedures rather than data. High-level languages like Fortran, Pascal and C employs this programming paradigm. When it comes to drawbacks of procedure-oriented programming, complexity increases as the program grows larger and larger and it does not model real world objects to overcome these drawbacks object oriented programming concept came into existence in object oriented programming it mainly focuses on data rather than procedure in this program are divided into number of entities called objects Data and functions are designed to characterize these objects. Data is hidden and cannot be shared by outside the functions. The objects that are created may interact with each other via functions. And it employs bottom-up approach. High-level languages like C Sharp, Python, Java, Visual Basic and C++ employs this programming model. So this is about programming paradigms. Next is characteristics of OOPS. What is an object? An object is an abstraction of a real world entity. It can be a person, a place, a number, anything. For example, consider an object called employee. What are the data members of an employee? See, if I want to collect the details of an employee, so what are all the details I can collect? I can collect details like the name of an employee, resignation, ID and age of an employee. So these are all the data members of an employee. And what are all the functions we can perform on this object? We can calculate the gross salary of an employee. We can calculate the total deductions as well as the, we can print the salary of an employee. So here, employee is an object. Name, designation, age and ID are the data members. Gross salary, total deduction and print salary are the member functions. So an object is a collection of data members and associate member functions. Each object is identified by a unique name. So this is about an object. Second one is classes. What are classes? A class is a collection of 
objects having common features once a class is defined we can create any number of objects for that class for example flower is a class lily lotus and rose are the members of the class flowers so here flower is a class lily lotus and rose are the members of the class flower next is data abstraction what is data abstraction data abstraction is nothing but hiding the inner details or the background details from an employee what is meant by the background details for example buying a car in a showroom so while buying a car in a showroom what are the features we are going to see whether it is a diesel one or petrol one or uh, we are going to think about the mileage or dual front airbags and all but we are not bothering about how the car is manufactured and how it gets integrated and all right so the manufacturing details are hidden from the sellers so this is called the data abstraction next concept is data encapsulation what is data encapsulation data encapsulation combines data and functions into a single unit called class it prevents direct access to data and the data can be accessed only through methods present inside a function this is called as encapsulation and next concept is inheritance what is an inheritance an inheritance is nothing but the acquiring the features from one class to another class for example father and son relationship consider father and son relationship so here father is the base class and son is the derived class why father is called as base class means son is inheriting the feature from his father like intelligence color or height so father is considered as the base class and son is considered as the derived class so this type of inheritance is called as single level inheritance it employs one to one relationship so now tell me what is a base class then a base class it is a class whose properties are inherited by another class is called as base class and then what is derived class it is a class that inherits properties from the base class so that is called as base class and derived classes in inheritance there are of five types first one is i have explained already single level inheritance the second one is multi level inheritance what is multi level inheritance it's a mechanism in which we inherit a class from another derived class is called as multi level inheritance an example for this is consider grandfather father and son relationship here the son may inherit the intelligence of the father and color of the grandfather hence son could be inherited so here son is inheriting the features from his father as well as grandfather so here father is one of the derived class because his father is inheriting the features from his father hence father is considered as a derived class and here we are deriving the features from one base class as well as the derived class and third type of inheritance is multiple inheritance what is multiple inheritance it's a mechanism in which a new class is derived from several base classes so here consider a king queen and prince relationship so here the prince is inheriting the 
king's intelligence and bravery and queen's beauty hence multiple inheritance follows many to one relationship hence it follows many to one relationship and next type of inheritance is hierarchical inheritance what is hierarchical inheritance it's a mechanism in which the features of one class may be inherited by more than one class so this follows one to many relationship so for this type of inheritance consider the example flowers so flowers is a base class hibiscus lotus and jasmine are all the derived class so here hibiscus lotus and jasmine are inheriting the features of flowers hence these are the inherited classes understood this is about hierarchical inheritance and next type of inheritance is hybrid inheritance so hybrid inheritance is a mechanism in which the program design requires two or more forms of inheritance the derived class may be inherited from the multiple and multi level classes or from the hierarchical and multiple classes so consider grandfather father and son relationship as well as mother so your son may inherit mother's color father's height and grandfather's intelligence so this is called as multi level and multiple inheritance understood next type of characteristic is polymorphism what is polymorphism polymorphism means taking many forms this is to say that in oops a single entity can take more than one form an example for this is addition of two numbers as a result of two numbers so in addition of two strings the operation is string concatenation when an operator behaves differently based on operands then it is said that operator is overloaded so based on the situation the addition function is going to perform the operations for example addition operation is used to add two integer numbers as well as two string numbers as well as the floating point numbers so based on the situation it is going to act that is called as polymorphism a next characteristic is overloading what is overloading overloading allows objects to have different meaning depending upon the context so in overloading there are of two types operator overloading and function overloading what is operator overloading when an existing operator operates on new data type it is called operator overloading when it comes to function overloading it means two or more functions having the same name but differ in the number of arguments as well as the data type of the arguments is called as function overloading so this is about overloading and next is dynamic binding what is dynamic binding dynamic binding is also called as late binding it refers to the process of resolving the functions to be associated with the function call at run time is called as dynamic binding and next is message passing what is message passing in this model every data is an object that is capable of processing requests known as messages a message is a protocol composed of a function and an object reference all objects in an object oriented program can communicate with each other by sending messages to one another message passing from one object to another involves the name of the object the name of the function as well as the information to be sent example customer deposit amount here customer is a name of an object deposit is name of the function and amount is the name of the information to be sent 
so this is about the characteristics of oops next is advantages of oops so what are all the advantages of oops so the pro programs are modularized based on classes and objects and it reduces code duplication and increases the code reusability it is easier to develop complex software because complexity can be minimized to inheritance and it implements a real time scenario creation and implementation of object oriented program code is easy and it reduces software development time data encapsulated along with functions therefore the external non member functions cannot access or modify data thus providing data security object oriented programming can communicate through message passing which makes interface description with outside system is very simple so this is about the advantages of oops next is disadvantages of oops with oops classes tend to be overly generalized and it is uh, difficult to convert a real world problem into an object oriented model the adaptability of flow diagrams and object oriented programming using classes and objects is a complex process and also one its proper planning and proper design for object oriented programming next is applications of oops so oops are widely used in the field uh, like computer graphic applications so using uh, c++ we can create low end graphics too that is creating basic shapes and uh, words with stylish fonts and we can add colors to them second application is cad or cam software so oop can be used in manufacturing and design applications as it allows people to reduce the effort involved oops makes it possible for the designers and engineers to produce these flow charts and blueprints accurately and next is object oriented databases what is an object oriented database they are also called as object database management systems uh, these databases store objects instead of data such as uh, real numbers and integers these databases try to maintain a direct correspondence between the real world and database objects in order to let the object retain its identity and integrity and next application is user interface design such as windows the graphical user interface design for windows operating system using object oriented programming is the most interesting feature of programming and next application is real time systems so real time systems inherit complexities that make it difficult to build them object oriented techniques make it easier to handle those complexities this is about real time systems next one is simulation and modeling what is simulation and modeling it's difficult to model complex systems due to the varying specification of variables these are prevalent in medicine and in other areas of natural science such as ecology zoology and ergonomic systems so object oriented programming provides an alternative approach of simplifying these complex modeling systems and next type of application is artificial intelligence and expert systems so these are the computer applications that are developed to solve complex problems pertaining to a specific domain which is at a level far beyond the reach of a human brain and it has the following characteristics like reliable highly responsive understandable and high performance and the last application is hypermedia and hypertext what is hypermedia 
Hypermedia is a super set of hypertext documents having hypermedia not only contain links to other pieces of text and information but also to numerous other forms of media ranging from images to sound. When it comes to hypertext, hypertext is similar to regular text as it can be stored, searchable and edited easily. The only difference is that hypertext is text with pointers to other text as well. So this is about the basic concepts of OOPS. It is programming paradigms, procedure oriented as well as object oriented programming, characteristics of OOPS and advantages, disadvantages as well as applications of OOPS. In the next video, I am going to upload the notes of this chapter, question with answers. So if you prepare for that, it is enough for your exams. So thanks for watching.